Okay, so we're going to carry on with angular momentum. So let's build up a little bit of intuition about angular, angular momentum by looking at pictures. Don't you like pictures? Okay, so say now we have a puck, two scenarios here. The same puck moving at the same speed, but hitting a rod. So we have a rod that's able to rotate about this right-hand side. It can rotate like that, okay? But in this picture, we have the, the puck hitting the rod right at the end of, of the rod. And in this case, we have the puck hitting the rod much closer to the, the axis of rotation, okay? And what we can see just um, experimentally is that the puck hitting the rod further away from this axis of rotation causes a larger velocity and a larger angular rotation. Okay? If you hit it closer to the axis of rotation, it causes a smaller um, angular velocity. Larger angular velocity, smaller angular velocity. So you can see just intuitively that applying a momentum to an object further away from its axis of rotation causes a larger uh, angular velocity, rotational velocity. Okay, so let's just look a little bit more at um, some of the equations. We know that, and, and we'll get back to that in, in a second, we know that if you consider uh, translational kinetic energy, it's given by half mv squared. And now let's look at rotational kinetic energy, half i omega squared. If we substitute um, mr squared for i and v over r there, we can see that, um, that a puck with a certain amount of kinetic energy if it has an elastic uh, collision, um, the rotational kinetic energy will be identical, okay? So just consider that for a second. However, if you look at that same puck, its translational momentum is mv, but if you want to look at its quantity um, i omega, which is the equivalent rotational quantity, you'll see that I omega is equal to RMV. Okay, now what are, what are we trying to say here? What are we trying to say? Um, a puck with a certain momentum, MV, um, will have a angular momentum, a rotational momentum equal to MV, times the radius, okay? So, so what we're saying is it has the same puck that has a momentum of mv has an ability to set this, um, this rod in motion, but this ability is dependent on the momentum times the radius, okay? So as you can see, this is what they're saying. The further you move, the further your radius, the larger your radius is that this, this guy hits this rod at, the larger the angular or the rotational momentum, the larger the ability to set this guy in rotational motion. I hope that's making sense, guys. Okay. So the larger the value of i omega for a moving object, the more easily the object can set another object in motion. Okay? So this object is moving with an, in a momentum of mv, a linear momentum, straight line momentum, nv, mv. But the ability for it to, um, to cause this rod to have ro rotational motion, that ability is dependent on the radius, how far from this axis of rotation it hits the rod. Okay? 
So actually, it's, it's, it's dependent on two things. It's dependent on its linear momentum, and it's dependent on the radius. The larger the radius, the larger its ability to cause rotation, and the, or the larger the momentum, the larger its ability to cause rotation. Okay? And so this is called angular momentum, and it's given by L equal to I omega. Its units are kilogram meter squared per second. <coughs> and this is in terms of angular velocity, but if we want angular momentum, L, in terms of um, velocity, it's going to give us this. RMV. Okay? So these are the two ways to calculate your angular momentum. So, um, okay, I think I've repeated myself enough. See you in the next one.